you know God is good, say amen. Amen. All right. church up in here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, I just want to say, Sister Barry told me to tell everybody how she missed y'all. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Our scripture reading, I want to start with Proverbs 3, I think 1 through 8, I'm thinking. Okay. Let's all read together. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. 
Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Eight, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. May God add a blessing to the hearers and do of his word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, O oh God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. There is none like you, O oh Lord, and all power and authority, dominion, is in your hands. You are unchangeable. No one can challenge you, O oh Lord. You are truth, you are love, you are strength. O oh, Father and God, we, we love you, O oh Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy towards us this morning. Father and God, in weakness, Lord, you are our strength. In sickness, Lord, you are our healer. Oh, Father and God, even when we stray, oh, Lord, you are our direction, Lord. You make the path straight and clear for us, oh, Lord. Oh, Father and God, you open our eyes that we can see, oh, Lord, that we can give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness towards us. Oh, Father and God, we praise your holy name. Father and God, you supply all our needs. Oh, Father and God, you never run out of goodness. Oh, Father and God, for us, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep our eyes on you, oh, Lord. Keep our eyes, oh, Lord, from turning to the, from the, to the left and to the right. Keep our eyes focused on you. Oh, Father and God, we thank you. We bless your name. We glorify your name. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise this morning. Father and God, we lift up your, your man, Silver, and the messenger this morning, the shepherd of this uh, 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 congregation, O oh Lord, the shepherd of this church, O oh Lord. Father and God, we ask you, Lord, to bless him in a special way this morning as he feed your people, Lord, your word which you put in his heart, O oh Lord. Father and God, help us, Lord, to receive your word and to feast on it, O oh Lord, so that we can give you glory, honor, and praise and say thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen, amen, amen. Let's put our hands together. The song says, the Lord is blessing me right now. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. The Lord is blessing.
magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. For the Lord is great and is worthy to be praised. Man, come we magnify him this morning. Magnify him and lift him. If God has not been good to you this week, then don't say anything. If God has not been good to you, don't clap. If God has not been good to you, don't clap. If God has not blessed you this week, don't praise him. I see we still have some people who weren't blessed this week. I still see we still have some people who weren't blessed this week. I said if God did not bless you this week, then you don't need to clap. But if he has blessed you, then you need to celebrate. So if God has blessed you, let's celebrate. Joyce, do you have my little stuff right there? I want to share some with you before we move on. While we, while we find it, oh, there we go. I think this is rather interesting. I got this from somebody. Science says that we need at least four basic elements to survive. Water, air, food, light. And look what the Bible tells us about Jesus. I am the living water. I am the what? I am the? I am the light of the world. But God is always right. Everything you need is right there in the Bible. It's not science. It's right in the Bible. Do we have anyone visiting with us today? If you're a visitor, would you please stand? Amen. 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 I want to say thank you all for coming. God is good. If you get up next Sunday morning and the Lord puts in your GPS, Missouri City Baptist Church, Come right back. Amen. 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 God is good. We love you. You may be seated. The young lady over here, this young lady, Monica Riley, I've known her quite a few years. You know, she's now in the runoff for Missouri City Council to be a Missouri City Council member, District A. So they start early voting pretty soon. Monday after Thanksgiving, early voting. So here is Monica Riley, someone who loves the community. She's been in the community many years. Her kids, you could. About every meeting I go to, I'm meeting this young lady. <laughs> Just about every meeting. She really cares about the community, loves the community, and we pray God's blessing on her. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much, Monica. Amen. God bless. It's also great to see in the house today our own Deacon Hadnot. Deacon Hadnot, stand again. He was well, uh, was here Sunday, two weeks ago. Monday he's in the hospital, but he only stayed a few days, and here he is back and singing. And singing. And Another deacon, Deacon Carl Harris. He had a, had a, a mishap, had to put his bike down. And that's a difficult situation. But I know one thing, there's a God. Because he explained some stuff to me with his helmet and stuff. There is a God. 
And because there's a God, here he is this morning. Oh, we have so much to give God thanks for. Amen. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday today? You know, some folks say that we need to also say during the week. <laughs> oh, anyone celebrating a birthday during the course of this week? Sister Price. Sister Price. Sister Price. Deacon, amen. Amen. Sister Savage, okay. Thursday, okay. And let's also be in prayer with and for the Savage family. Um, Thomas Savage Jr. is currently in the hospital, experiencing a difficult moment. We know how difficult it is, and, and Sister Savage back and forth. So we want us as a church to be in prayer for him, with him, and also for Sister Savage. It's a difficult situation, and he needs a prayer. But Missouri City Baptist Church knows what prayer can do. We have seen over and over how God is blessed and how he keeps on blessing. The savage, the Lord is in charge, and he is able to stay strong. Amen? Any of our college students are here today? No, this is Thanksgiving weekend. Uh-huh. Okay, we have two of them here. Three of them here. Three of our college students in town. I'm proud of you all. I've just been hearing good things about you all. Keep up the good work. Amen? And keep aiming for A. If you don't get the A, don't get disgusted. Just keep trying. Amen? Do the best you can at all times. Let's continue through our tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know I'm, I'm ecstatic. Words can't express how happy I am to be here today. This first day of the week, Thanksgiving week. And we have so much to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of this congregation. I'm so glad I'm a part of these people. I ain't never had so much fun in church, you know. <laughs> but I have so much fun, you know, that it just gets, oh, man. You know, we, in a few months, on the 23rd of January, we'll be celebrating 30 years. Amen. 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 And we know it was not because we were so good and so kind and so merciful. It's because of God's grace, right? And a, and a group of people being willing to submit and yield to God and do what he wants you to do. And everybody playing their role. Other people not trying to play somebody else's role, but playing their role. Those are things that make the church go. And so we are just so thankful for it. And you know, as a part of our... 30 year anniversary celebration, uh, we were asking our congregation to consider uh, giving a free will offering to God. It's not to us, it's to God, right? And it's a personal decision. You know, it's been our way every, throughout our history that we do not tell people what to give God, right? It's up to the individual in consultation with God Amen. to decide what they give. Amen. Amen. We don't keep up with it. We don't tell people what to do. And look how God has blessed us over the 30 years. Amen. Because you had people doing it on their own. Amen. Because God wants us to do it willingly. God wants us to do it what? Cheerfully and everything. You know, you don't want, you, you don't want to have to make somebody love you. Amen. <laughs> you want people to love you willingly. All right. We don't want God saying to us what love got to do with it. But you know, we want we want we want to exhibit we want to exhibit love to God out of thanksgiving 
for all the things that he's done for us. I'm going to read from 1 Chronicles 29. I'm going to first read verses 1 and 2. Uh, then I'm going to read verse 5, and then I'm going to skip down to, to verse 9. And I'm reading from the New International Version. It reads as follows. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. Amen. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone marble, all of these in large quantities. Verse 6 says, Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. Verse 9 said, The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. To the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. Let's go to God for a word of prayer. Father God, we... We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your kindness, and the favor that you have shown to us over these 30 years, Father. Because the Bible says the earth is yours and the fullness thereof and everything in it. So we know every good and thing comes from you. So we just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us individually and collectively, Father. We thank you for the way you blessed our church, Father. We thank you for the way you have brought us through every situation. And you've brought us through successfully, Father, and we've never missed a beat. So we just thank you, Lord, and we just ask you, Father, to make us highly sensitive to your will, your plan, your purpose, Father. We ask for your leadership, guidance, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, provision, and protection. And we also ask you, Father, we know we need your courage, your strength to follow you wholeheartedly. We can't do any of this on our own. We're everything, nothing, Father. Everything in you and nothing on our own. So we just thank you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you because there's none like you, not even one. And the people of God said, Amen. One more time. Amen. One last time. Amen. Amen. And just the three ways to give. You can give on, online. Uh, you can give, you can send it in the mail. And you also can bring it to the church or give, him, or give in the back under the clock. Uh, you can, you can uh, give your tithes today. Amen. God bless you.
you, Jesus. More than anything. I love you, Jesus. Do this one more time. I love you, Jesus. Thanks to the praise team, our musicians, ushers, technicians, ministers, deacons, leaders, everyone present here today. It's good being in the house of the Lord. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 And this is Thanksgiving week, and I'm going to preach the message that the Lord gave me. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, one verse. But those who hope in the Lord, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I think the King James Version says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And today I want to speak to you in a very simple title for a short moment. Wait on the Lord. Not on man, but on the Lord. No, just as a background, let me let you know that it is said that nothing much is known about Isaiah or about his family except what is expressed in Isaiah 1 verse 1, chapter 1 verse 1. Isaiah is believed to have been from a royal descent, and his name suggests the salvation of God. He is said to have prophesied for 48 years, 48 years. It is said that because he resisted a king, is in the southern kingdom. He resisted the king's idolatrous decrees. He was placed between two planks. 
and he was sawed or cut apart. Brothers and sisters, this is a horrible death. And if you notice, if you go to Hebrews, you know the Hebrews 11 where it says, by faith. If you look at verse 37, it says, by faith, and it talks about those who are sawed, cut apart. It is said that this relates to Isaiah the prophet. Now, brothers and sisters, the story is told of some furious shoppers in Florida. Anyone from Florida? Anyone from Florida? Oh, no one. <laughs> yes, it's a fisher. They'd be out there. <laughs> there were some furious shoppers in Florida. <laughs> the Fresh Market Grocery Store pride itself on its customer service, quality of products, and selection of products. The customers appreciate that shopping in a nice environment is worth paying more for groceries, which could be purchased less at other lower stores. I'll go and pay a little more money at some place that gives me good service. Are you with me? That's what they're saying here. Now, there are two people. It says... While they were waiting to get the grocery, one highly agitated Jewish woman, a retiree from New York, said, if I want to stand in line and waste five minutes of my day, then I will shop at Walmart or Winn-Dixie. I pay more, so I want more. Five minutes is a lot of me, a lot of my time. I have, you know, stuff to do. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter what, but I don't like waiting. Does that sound like anybody in here? There's another, another shopper who is shaking his head throughout this long wait, said, it's a disgrace. I come here because I don't want to shop with lower class people. Excuse me. Excuse me. I know I pay more, but for that I want not to wait in line. He said a few words that are not in the Bible. Or that we as Christians are not familiar with. <laughs> and while seeing this, his face turned red. Others also demanded an explanation and vented their anger by murmuring to themselves, shaking their heads, looking at their wrists, at non existent watches. You know, you're not know wearing a watch, but it's just a habit. <laughs> and not actually saying anything to anyone in a store. That will teach them, said one woman, who actually did nothing, did not complain, just rolled her eyes, at who was not at all bothered by the weight. One woman. Brothers and sisters, here we see people who are who have a microwave mindset. It's my money, and I want it now. Brothers and sisters, everything is not intended to be gotten right away. There are times when we have to wait. As long as we live in this world, we're going to have experiences where we have to wait. How do we handle these experiences? 
to the savage. Thomas is going through a difficult moment, but Sister Savage realizes that with the Lord in control, she's going to be waiting until he says or does what he says or does what he wants to do. I can give you maybe three experiences where I had to exert my faith and wait and was successful. I was returning from a mission trip overseas. And I had to lay over at one airport for 10 hours. But this is the 10, hardest 10 hours of my life. I read, I looked at paper, I walked. I read, I looked at paper, I walked. I must have dozed a couple of times, but guess what? I waited. And as a result, I got on the plane and returned back home. Wait. I didn't fuss. I didn't complain, even though it was difficult. When I graduated from Brooklyn College undergrad, I had to wait over six months to get my diploma because they had just started. It was the period of time you'd remember when they were trying to copy the diplomas, make up their own diplomas so people having college diplomas that weren't real. So I had to wait over six months. But brothers and sisters, guess what? Because I wait, because I waited, I got it. Deacons, why are you all so happy? Did you wait too? <laughs> And another example, some of you would remember this. We were on a cruise, went to the Bahamas. We're now in Freeport, Bahamas, on the way to NASA, Bahamas. And Reverend Fogel got ill. The ambulance met us at the dock to take her to the hospital. We got to the hospital, and one of the first things they told us is that she cannot get back on the ship. She has to find another way to get back to the United States. She could not ride the regular plane to come back. Holy God. We're going crazy because now we have to get back on the ship at a certain time. And so we decided that she's going to get a, I forget what you call the planes, passenger, not patient plane or whatever it's called, a plane with the doctors and the nurses, whatever it's called, in order to come back to the United States. Okay, that had to be arranged. So there I am going back. The price, you're there too. It's brown, yes. Back and forth. And now they're sitting as if it's okay. We have to get back on the ship. We're waiting patiently, and they're like they're doing nothing. So a few times I had to go up and talk to them in a very strong tone. It's now 2.30. We have to get back on the ship by 4. And then Reverend Fogel is saying to us, you all are not going to leave me over here, are you? <laughs> they can handle it. You're there. You all are not going to. So we are between Reverend Fogel's words, the ship we need to get because I'm not staying there either. Three o'clock. Oh, that's when I got a little hot then. But thanks be to God, we waited. 
and the Lord worked it that she was able to live on the plane and we were able to live on the ship. Thank you, Lord. We waited. Waiting is not easy. But when you wait on the Lord, he does all that he needs to get done. Ooh, wait on the Lord. Brothers and sisters, waiting on the Lord in the Hebrew suggests not merely killing time. Are you with me? Not merely killing time, but a life of confident anticipation. A life of confident expectation. And a life of confident hope. We are not asked to wait on our fellow citizens. Because when you wait on people, very often they let you down. When you should have had something done, you're waiting on them, they never show up. But it says, wait on the Lord. Because the Lord is never absent. He is always present. He is always available. He is always ready. He is always there. Wait on the Lord. Let me share with you a few things when you wait on the Lord, what happens. Ah. Waiting on the Lord suggests depending completely, completely. I'm not one of these preachers who have you to say things after me, but today I'll say this one word. It's too strong. Let's say together completely. When I say depending, you'd say completely, as if you mean it. Waiting on the Lord suggests depending is that all you have? <laughs> Waiting on the Lord suggests depend. Ah, oh, don't rush me now, man. <laughs> all those who came in before, I'll pray with you after the service. Yeah. Waiting on the Lord suggests depending. That's better. On Him. Look, look at Romans, Romans eight, Romans. I mean Proverbs three. Look at what Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not, lean not on your own understanding. It's not about you. It's about him. Uh, next verse. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he may. And he might. And he will make your path straight. When you depend on the Lord, everything is going to work just fine. Because you know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where it should be done. Wait on the Lord. Secondly, when we wait on the Lord, we should be eager. We should be enthusiastic and ready to allow the Lord to determine or to decide the details. Lean not unto your own understanding. Let the Lord determine the details. Let him work it out. Allow him to do that. Uh, when we wait in the Lord, we should be willing to acknowledge and to recognize that we have no other help but the Lord. We have no other help but the Lord. I guess that's why the songwriter is a moment of anticipation and engagement. Reached back and said, 
Father, I stray. My hand to thee. No other help. I know. If thou wilt draw thyself from me, or whether shall I go? In other words, we are nothing without the Lord. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whether shall I? We are nothing without the Lord. So don't go wrong as if you're all that piece of Junior's cheesecake. You're only who you are because the Lord is in you, around you, over you, under you, shielding you, guiding you, directing you, protecting you. That's why you are who you are. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me, where would I be? Well, when we wait on the Lord, we should recognize it until the Lord gives his help. We are helpless until the Lord does what he needs to do. There is not much that we can do. When we are uh, aware of the Lord, we should always realize that the Lord acts in his time. And for our good, for our benefit, and on our behalf. So, so you ask me, why am I so confident in my waiting? I'm glad you asked me, because I'm going to tell you why. Uh, you all want to know why? I'll tell you why, because I know a man from Galilee who saved my soul. I know a man from Galilee, who made me whole. Don't you know that he is a wonderful friend who through thick and through thin, he understands. I know a man. I know a man. I know a man. I know a man. Yes, I know a man who walks by my side. Both day and night, Jesus walks by my side. Both day. He walks by my side both day and night. I know a man. That's why I am so confident in my waiting. And then, uh, I, think it was, I think it was Andrew Crouch who said, you may be wary and feel like your change may never come. But don't be disheartened, for in patience possess ye your soul. So wait on the Lord, my friend, and be of good courage. If you wait, if you wait, if you wait, God will renew your strength. Wear in the Lord and be of good courage. Mm, therefore, I said to you today, wait, don't give up, and don't give in. Wait, even though COVID seems like it's never going to pass, keep on waiting. Wait, though the storms keep on raging in your life and it seems like it's hard to tell the night from day keep on waiting wait even though you are being persecuted you are not forsaken 
even though you are being struck down, you are not destroyed. Wait, wait. Even though it seems, oh, even though it seems like your money is funny. Wait. Even though it seems that nothing is going right for you. You turn right, it's bad. You turn left, it's bad. You go forward, it's bad. You go back, it's bad. Wait on the Lord. He is going to make your path straight, clear, beautiful. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He is able. He is able. What does the song say? He is able. He is able to do just what he said. God is able to do just what he said he would do. Not sometimes, but all the time. How many of us know that this morning? Don't give up on God, for he won't give up on you. He's able. God is able. There may be some here today who have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you have not, what a, what a beautiful day today is for you to make such a decision. There may be some here today looking for a church home. You've been looking for a while, and today the Lord is saying, Today is your day. Now is the moment. This is the hour. Do not delay. Do not linger. If the voice is speaking to you today, the voice of the Lord, do not delay. Why not come? You need to be covered in the church. Be covered before Thanksgiving. If there's any here today, would you please come? The invitation is given. Do not delay. Don't leave and let Satan get a victory. I should have and I didn't. Don't leave and say, I should have. Leave saying, I did. Because you may not have another moment, another minute, another hour, another day, another week, another month, or another year. Whatever you have to do, do it now. If the Lord is calling, he means that you should do it now. Is there any today? Do not linger. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen.
just a couple of announcements and we leave. I want to announce them. Proud to announce this. Um, Miss Fanny Young, can you please stand? And don't think that I'm going to say we're having another baby. <laughs> so just, uh, just keep it quiet. That is not the announcement. <laughs> uh, thank you, Derek. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm proud of um, Sister Fanny, my wife. Um, she was just um, elected to serve on the executive board for Texas Baptist. I know it's a funny there. Um, the office actually called me and said that my wife would serve. I said, I just say, will you serve? She prayed and she accepted. I think it's uh, good that she can keep on representing the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> also, we want to continue to be in prayer for all of our sick and shut ins. Very important that we keep on praying. Amen? You know, we haven't seen Sister Calhoun in a while. She had a birthday this week. She's still in the facility. We keep on in prayer for her. And all of her others, all the others in the facilities or in the hospitals. Uh, Sister Barry is, when Barry is still, still at home, and he's serving as doctor and nurse. <laughs> as I say, um, it's really good to see our deacons out back today after having been in a hospital and going through different situations. That's why I appreciate you all so much. Missouri City Baptist Church is a praying church who believes, Missouri City Baptist Church believes that whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, whatever the condition, the God we serve is able to bring healing. We've seen it over and over and over. And we say, thank you, Lord. So let's continue to be in prayer for all the people going through all different circumstances. So circumstances around the world, here in the United States, that God would do just what he sees to do. And that we continue to be in prayer for the families of the Ashtra world situation, that's a very difficult situation. Let us stay in prayer. Each week, each day, if you can just lift up the church in prayer, the members, the community, the mayor, the governor, everyone, because as we serve together, we may have different ideologies, but it's not about that. It's about trying to work together for the good of. Amen? Yes. Let's try to work together that God will continue to bless us. Yes. Visitors, thank you all for coming again. It's always good to see you all. And I say, you're welcome back. This time you came and there was no charge. When you come the second time, there's still no charge. <laughs> Amen? God is good. Members, always good to see you. We have no Bible study or anything this week on the system. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Eat as much as you want to. On Friday and Saturday, you can fast. But enjoy Thanksgiving. Do some nice steaks. Some nice fish. Some nice shrimp. Get some nice food. Amen. And enjoy Thanksgiving. Amen. May you have a good week. May everything you do and say be led, blessed, and directed by God. May you be blessed spiritually, physically, financially, or any other way God sees fit to bless you. Can we claim his blessings for the week? Mr. Monica, stay strong. We stay in prayer with you and for you. Let's stand, please, as you be dismissed.
Yeah, I understand. I um, understand we have another announcement. As we know, the Wallers are expected, and it was um, announced yesterday that it's going to be either boy or girl. <laughs> and when the note was struck, the father was jumping all in the air because he's going to have somebody to play basketball with him. It's a boy. It's a boy. It's a boy. Amen. All praises to God, honor to his son, Jesus Christ. You know, a member wanted to know where is the scripture I always recite at the end of service, and it's in Jude 24, Jesus' brother. And it reads, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And the church said, Amen. 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 